Rashida Atkinson. At guard, number eight, Deirdre Edwards. At guard, number 11, Abino Addo. At forward, number 21, Charlotte Collier. And at forward, number 22, Alana Garner. and Toronto won that game 76-71. So Mustangs really 0-2 against Toronto. They did finish with a better record. They were 14-6, Toronto 8-11 on the season. Walensky down to high, down low to Julia Curran. Curran is the first bucket of the game, 2-0 Western. Nice to see her back in the starting lineup tonight. She wants to make her mark. She gets the start and she's off, she's off to a good start. Well, she didn't play in the last game. Brian Chang decided to rest her, so nice to see her and Victoria Hine both back in the lineup. Maddie Horst, though, she is still out, and she will be out indefinitely. You talked to the coaches before the game. It's going to be uh, an uphill battle without her, but they're, they're prepared to do everything they can to fill those shoes. Yep, I talked to the coaching staff about what her absence meant to this team. They said that it's a tough loss in the playoffs, but, but they've been practicing with the full team, and, and they can fill the void. And that's a replacement right there. Meredith McLeod getting Western up by five. The Lindsay native. Money from downtown. McLeod dribbling at the top. Caroline Walensky will be doing the primary ball handling duties with Horst out for the remainder of the season. Victoria Hine goes hard down to the ground. She's missed a couple of games in recent weeks. And they will be certainly glad to have her rebounding back for Western. Walensky in now to Kern. Gets it back at the top of the three-point line. Guarded by Adele. She's got Puklic shot clock winding down. Puklic goes baseline. Down and to Hein. Hein gets the ball ripped out of her hands from Ashkinson. And it goes right into the, into the Blues' hands. So they will get the ball here. Atchison, guarded by Walensky. Three-pointer on its way from Garner. Garner, that one goes in and out. And Western gets it back. Could be a gritty game. Western, they, they lost to Toronto in the middle of a three-game losing streak back in November. And they've been winning a lot lately thanks to that lady right there, Mackenzie Puklich. Puklich, the OUA leading scorer on the season. We congratulate her, 18.6 was her mark. And that is quite an accomplishment. Here's Ashkinson, a three pointer from her. That won't go either. Western with a three point shooting percentage advantage over the Varsity Blues. Puklic gonna drive off the glass, doesn't go. Hine with the rebound. Ball goes out of bounds and it will be Blues ball. And we'll go, Katrina, what are the keys to the game, starting with the Western Mustangs? Rebound, 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 is what their coaching staff said. Um, Toronto, they said, is one of the top rebounding teams 
in the league, so they want to be able to beat them on the board and get those rebounds. And that is, seems to be a, a common theme as the key to the game for the Western Mustangs in the last few. It seems and to come up quite a bit. <laughs> Vers the Varsity Blues did have a 2.2 more rebounds per game lead in the season, so they do have a slight advantage on that category on our sheet. And that, a three-pointer. Atkinson gets Toronto's first basket. It's 7-3 Western early on at Alumni Hall. Walensky playing in what could be her last ever basketball game. She doesn't want that to happen. She's going to do absolutely everything to get Western to the next round, which will be Saturday. This is our last women's basketball broadcast for you on Mustangs TV. We're sad to t tell you that, so really savor this one. We'll, it's, been, it's, been, it's been good to, uh, to be covered for you, but you can definitely catch OUAT, OUA TV's coverage for the next round if Western makes that there. Oh, a deep three on its way from Collier. It doesn't go. And look at the rebound, the hustle on the floor from McLeod. She is really earning her time in tonight's starting lineup for Western. Walensky slowing things down. A steal nearly from Atkinson. That pass intended for Puklich. Western has to be careful in those. Cloud thinks about shooting, she's gonna drive the lane. Hine pulls up for the jumper, doesn't go. Puklic going for the rebound, fighting. Throwing around the bodies. And Toronto will take possession. We'll say foul. Toronto, you could say it's coming into this game on a little bit of a, a hot streak. Back-to-back -back wins, including one over the Queens Gales, who Western saw their nine-game win streak come to an end against a few weeks ago. Yep, Toronto's definitely been on quite the hot streak. Big win against Queens, as you said. Um, Atkinson had 32 points in that game, so definitely a player you're going to want to look out for. And there's a foul on Mackenzie Puklich. And we will have our first Western substitution. It's Sam Lauks. And how about the game she had last Saturday night? Western was actually down in that game in their final game of the season against Algoma. She comes into the game and knocks down back-to-back three-pointers to really put Western ahead by good measure and, and spark them. And it's her three-point shooting that really is her biggest strength on this team, and Western will look to use that here. Curran, Hine, left elbow, Hine driving, going up with her right, collided, oh, there's Curran under the basket, she'll get fouled and go to the line for two. Julia Curran, finished the season up, 6.8 points per game, She's a 61.2% free throw shooter. Hard to believe she's in her first year. And dribbling up the ball to the court now is Parks. She's been playing some excellent basketball lately for the Varsity Blues. A great spark off the bench for them. That ball goes out of bounds off of Atkinson. Could be a costly turnover. Walensky brings the ball over half. He's got Julia Curran down low. That, Laura Graham just shy on that shot, but a great setup. You got that high-low elbow go action going on, and the cutter on the baseline. Curran, such great hands and visibility at that elbow, really dangerous 
options for the Western Mustangs when they get her in that position. Graham for three. I can't say enough good things about this, about the depth at the backcourt position for the Western Mustangs. The absence of Maddie Horse, Laura Graham goes on for Meredith McLeod. McLeod knocks down the first three. Laura Graham does the exact same thing. In and out for Parks. Toronto retains possession. And we'll go to the keys of the game for the Toronto Varsity Blues. Katrina, what are they? The coaching staff said that they wanted to play their style of basketball. A big part of that is boxing out. They don't want to let Western get the ball off of that board. And they said that normally they'd keep an eye on the big three, but with horse out, that becomes the big two with Wilinski and Puklic. And those are the players you really have to watch out for. And especially with the absence of Maddie Horse, that's 12.1 points per game that you don't really have to worry about if you're the Toronto University Blues. As Julia Curran got a beautiful steal that leads to that Sam Lauk's layup. And look at these Mustangs coming off the bench. First Laura Graham with the big three-pointer, and then Lauk's with the layup in transition. 13-4 Western early. We'll be back with more first quarter action on Mustangs TV. Twenty-six to go in the first quarter. A doe over to Atkinson. Atkinson driving baseline jumper from Bikini. Bikini knocks that down. The long two-pointer from the corner. Here's McLeod. McLeod, great fake, good pass to Victoria Hine. Hine can't get that to go. Curran trying to rip that ball. McLeod gets it back to here's Lokes for three. That's just shy. Great second effort by the Western Mustangs. Look at that steal. Here's McLeod in transition. She's got five points. And that all set up with Meredith McLeod having her hands up on defense. And Caroline Walensky, the captain, had her hands up as well. Picked off the steal. The that trickled from McLeod and the Western Mustangs are rolling right now at Alumni Hall. A good looking floater from Adele. Oh, a pass a bit out of reach for Walensky. She's able to control that. Sam Laux. Seven seconds to go on the shot clock. McLeod, she's gonna square up for three. She's gonna make it. Eight points for Miss McLeod. Keep the fire going, but that does not look good. Victoria Hine on the ground, and you can see that brace on her right knee. She's been battling injuries all season long, and Western so happy to have her back in this game. They they wanted to give her a rest. They didn't need her as badly for those last couple games of the regular season, so this could be very hurtful. Not only does she score, but she can get the rebounds, and her physical presence is what Western really needs against a, a team like Toronto. She's been a big presence on this team this year, and with 
horsed out for the rest of the season, it would just be devastating if they had even more injuries during their playoff run. So hopefully she's okay because this team is at its best when it's healthy. They certainly are. A bit of a closer game than we anticipated actually at Algoma on Saturday. Western coming out with a 59-49 win, but with the absence of Maddie Horst, Julia Curran, Victoria Hine, it took a while for the Mustangs to really get rolling in that game. They did come away with the win, but we are seeing a much different Western Mustangs team so far here tonight at Alumni Hall. And a travel call on the Varsity Blues. Western looking to capitalize here. 2.43 to go in the first. Van Heeswick into the game. Curran, a nice look to Laux. Laux, that's a long jumper. Too long on the shot as well. Walensky for three. Got it! They're raining threes, those Western Mustangs ladies. Toronto tries to counter with a three of their own. Ado off on the mark, 21-8 Western. Western, 7% better on the season from three-point land than the Varsity Blues. They're a 31.5% mark. Walensky gonna try another three. That one's just goes out. Ado driving. Beautiful pass into Collier. And Charlotte Collier will go to the line for two. Her first team third. Maddie Baker and Aleta Gardner return for the Blues. Collier just a 38.5% free throw shooter on the year. And she's Collier off the mark on the first. 4.4 points per game. Well, free throw is definitely not the strong point of this Toronto team. They're 59.9%, which is 17th in the league. That's uh, not a great number and that could hurt the Varsity Blues, Alex Van Heeswick, that ball goes right between her hands, and Collier, she can't control it either. A sequence of sloppy basketball in those ten, in those five seconds right there, Katrina, both teams need to clean that up. If they want to get back in this game, they definitely do, but a big part of that as well is we've seen Western playing some very strong, tenacious defense. So some credit is due there. McLeod yelling on the right baseline for the th for the basketball. Graham and Walensky did not notice her and they ended up turning it over. You gotta think McLeod has the hot hand right now. You gotta keep feeding and find, trying to find her on the court. So Edwards, a good job drawing contact. She'll head to the line for a pair of free throws and she misses the first. Edwards, a pretty solid contributor on this Toronto Varsity Blues team. And she makes the second one. Under one minute to play in the first quarter. Meredith McLeod, double tween in the corner. A smart heads up play by her. She throws that off of Ado. Really, she got swarmed there like a couple of bees coming over to her. Well, I think Toronto's caught on that. She's got the hot hand right now. They don't want to give her any space or any room to let her shoot the ball. Literally. Louse, down low to Graham. Western a 4-1 offense on right now. Walensky's going to pull up with a jumper. Oh, that's her spot. Walensky. She has been pretty hot herself lately on the basketball court, putting up some 20 plus point basketball games. Oh, how 
about that? They are firing from all over the three-point line and making them. The Western Mustangs, 26 points. Nine seconds to go in the first quarter. That one goes just in time for Collier, 26-11. That will do it for the first quarter of basketball. Meredith McLeod, eight points for the Western Mustangs. Laura Graham has six, both of them, 100% for the three-point land. Caroline Linsky also has one, the Mustangs. A, a whopping five for seven from downtown right now ahead of the Toronto Varsity Blues. We'll be back with second quarter action after this. Welcome to Golden Hawk Lake. Is this the new Toyota Highlander? Yep. Must feel like your own little world in here. I guess. Does this world of yours have a name? Mm, uh, no. Ever look at the stars through your moonroof? I have. Ever wish upon them? No, not, no. Is a backup camera like having eyes in the back of your head? A little. One or two eyes? Oh. So it has a V6 engine, right? Yes, sir. Is it powerful? Definitely. Do you think I'm powerful? Possibly. The all-new Toyota Highlander. One look, and you'll want to know more. Another three-pointer from the Western Mustangs. Laura Graham, three for three in the game so far. Western, 29-11. What a great way to start the quarter, Katrina. They, it is literally raining threes in here. Well, it's been the unlikely heroes for the Mustangs that have really stepped up during this game. Walensky on the steal. Easy layup. Oh, it doesn't go in. Just bounced out a little bit far from the basket on that attempt. She's looking to redeem herself next time down the court and back the other way. It's Edwards drawing the contact. She'll go to the line for two. What a start to that quarter. Well, Toronto's coaching said that they want to watch out for Walensky and Kuklic, but that game plan might change with the way that McLeod and Graham have both been playing. McLeod, perfect from three-point land, two for two. She's got eight points during this game, and Laura Graham, we just saw, had that three-pointer to open up the second quarter, and she's three for three for three-pointers. That's a tongue twister. And Curran responds with a basket of her own. Western up by 18. Toronto can't find the same success from the distance. Edwards just about drew, drew contact again. Here's Curran, a fight for it on the floor. Smith, another drive, but it's too late. Shot clock violation. It'll be Western ball. It's getting pretty physical down in that key, Katrina. Well, both teams said they want to work on the rebounding. Western out rebounding the Varsity Blues in that first quarter, 11 to five. Puklic for three, off. Oh. 
And Curran called for a foul. The game's starting to slow down a little bit. Not exactly the way the Western Mustangs would like it. They're a, a very good team in the speed, so if they can just stop fouling Katrina, they should be able to play that basketball they had earlier on in the first quarter. They play so well in transition. They're so good on the break and finding those shooters on the sides. That's, that's, their, that's, their play, that's their style of the game. We've seen that game in and game out in the regular season. They're a speedy team. They're a team that has the ability to find the person breaking down the court and get them that lead pass. And that's their style of basketball. Western breaks the press with no problems. Walensky retrieves it back at the point. Here's Graham, another three-pointer on its way from her. Finally, she's, she's human, she missed. Three of four on the game. Graham, that ball gets kicked by Edwards. So Western, coming back down to earth a little bit now, they're now six of 10 from three-point land, still an incredible number. Walensky. Crow. A far pass, and here is Crow. She's going to try to fire from three. That won't go. Good rebound by Graham. Graham draws the foul underneath. Western, you said rebound, rebound, rebound. That was a great rebound. That was a good rebound. They've been doing a great job of it so far. Really sticking to their, their keys to the game. They know what they have to do to win. and. That's exactly what they've been doing. They've been rebounding. They've, they've been playing their game. They've been setting the pace throughout the first quarter and the beginning of the second quarter. Three-pointer, nothing but net for Atkinson. Said we have to keep an eye on her. 15.6 points per game in the regular season and a lethal attacker for this Toronto Varsity Blues team. That ball goes off of Smith and out of bounds. The Varsity Blues overcame a 10-point third quarter deficit back in the regular season when these two teams played. Atkinson led the way in that game. She went a career high, 34 points, going 11 for 18 from the floor. McLeod, like she is on fire. She is having quite the game, really stepping up in the absence of force, and the coaching staff's got to love the way that she's been playing for them. Well, Maddie Horst, she's smiling over the bench. She's having a good time. Really happy for how her teammates are playing. Shot clock winding down. That one doesn't go from the Blues. Good rebound from Parks. And a gr better deep bench from Caroline Walensky. Here's Walensky and Van Heeswick at a two-on-one. She's going out to McLeod. And wow, Meredith McLeod. Five of five from downtown. She is absolutely deadly. A great shot from Meredith McLeod, but that play was started with that steal from Walensky. She has 50 steals on the season, which is second in the OUA, so you got to give her some credit for that play as well. Yeah, you really got to give it credit for this, this Western defense. So tenacious, their hands are up there. They're seeing man, they're seeing ball, and McLeod, five of five from the field, four of four from downtown. We'll take a look at the, of, at the OUA West standings in the league. So Western finished up in second place, right behind the Windsor Lancers. They're playing tonight, as are the Laurier Golden Hawks and Western. They had a good season. They had a chance to play with West with Windsor. They couldn't do it. In the East, Ryerson coming out on top. They have a bye. They're not in tonight. 
Queens, though they are, they're one of the better teams too. The Varsity Blues came up and just beat Toronto. That's it right there. Third place in the conference, but they're a very good team. You got McMaster, Guelph, Brock, all capable ball squads. They're all, they're all in action except for McMaster, Ottawa and Carlton, both off tonight. And Laurentian able to squeeze into the playoffs off of a three and 16 mark. Just goes to show this whole three teams per division to get in the playoffs may not be the best way to do it, but that they're, they're in and hey, who knows? They're a better basketball team than their record, but still three and 16. There's other teams, other divisions that had a much better record. That one doesn't fall for the Varsity Blues. Walensky, pull up Jay, it's good. Captain Caroline. Puts the Western Mustangs up, 40-17. 5.35 to go in the second. Blues, good movement around the perimeter. And now down low, Bikini outside to Atkinson. Atkinson driving, and the rebound is goes out of bounds off of Crow, so it will be Blues basketball. Well, the shot's just not falling for Toronto so far tonight. They're 5 of 20 for the field, while Western 15 of 27. It's an amazing statistic, Katrina, to be that good from the floor this early in the basketball game. McLeod, still perfect. A perfect 5 of 5. Western looking for her. Walensky, guarded very closely by Parks. Parks gets called for the foul. Walensky, not really impressed about that. A very well-respected player across all Ontario. She didn't, didn't like it that the player would try to hack a ball from her. So 40-17, and let's take a look at the final, final stats of the leaders in points per game in the season, because the Western Mustangs had a player on their squad coming out on top. Mackenzie Puklich leading the way in points per game in the OUA at 18.6 per game. And her third year of eligibility, pretty incredible. For uh, Ryerson. Ping Giles at 17.6 points per game. Those two, two games before the end of the season, going into Western's second last game against Lakehead. They were both tied, but Mackenzie Puklich able to put out some good scoring performances in those final two games to stay up there. Take a look at three-point percentage, and there she is, Maddie Horse in third place, not in the lineup tonight, 42.6 on the season. They're missing those threes, but boy, are they getting them elsewhere. Walensky has one. Horse, not any, but McLeod, four threes, and that lady right there, number eight, Laura Graham has three. Eight three-pointers from the Western Mustangs. They are really riding off the long ball right now. Van Heeswick drives left against the other number 14. She's gonna go up just a little bit short. Can't get that over. Bikini, the Blues get the ball back. 4.41 to go in the second quarter. Parks, she unloads, but not anywhere near the target. Chuck Lock winding down, Walensky, baseline. Here's Graham cutting. McLeod has to get something to go here. She's gonna drive, go to the hoop, off the glass and in. She stays perfect, six of six. Incredible. 15 points already. And another steal by Walensky. Walensky all alone, up off the glass and in. Western, 
They are rolling 44-17, Katrina. Well, we said at the beginning of the broadcast that Western's had a bit of a hard time with Toronto this year, but they've been saving it all up for this game. Three-pointer. This one, courtesy of Atkinson, it won't fall. Toronto Varsity Blues just can't find the same three-point success that the Western Mustangs are. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, you got to try different areas in the floor. Toronto down by quite a substantial amount this time. If they want to get back into this game, they just have to keep shooting and have to, have to hope that something falls. McLeod, another three-pointer. Five three-pointers on the game. She is killing it out there. And she draws the foul. The LCVI grad is absolutely going off. McLeod. Good fake. They got to respect that shot at this point in the game. Farth corner. Oh, and Graham gets called for the travel, but it was a good fake by her. Red intention just. A little bit ahead of herself on her steps. Would have been a nifty move if she pulled it off, but went to go for that spin and just couldn't keep that pivot foot down. But gotta admire the effort. Western back the other way. Here's Walensky. She's been the the pivot for the Western Mustangs today. Graham thinks about it, has the open lane. Down low to Victoria Hine. Good to see her back in the game and getting right on the board. Hine took a bit of a spill earlier in the first quarter, so great to see her aggressive underneath the basket there and putting the Western Mustangs up by a remarkable 32 points. That's some impressive math, good job. Victoria Hine. But Weston working the ball around here. Well, let's go. Look at those dribbles. Wow. This is what I mean. Walensky couldn't believe why somebody would try to steal the ball from her at the top of the three point line. She has handles. One twenty-eight to go in the second quarter. Western playing some of their best basketball all season long. Walensky spins out to McLeod in the corner. It's Laux. She's going to fire a three-pointer and she's going to make it. Literally everything is falling for the Mustangs. Everything just needs to be going right for them during this game. It's just one of those days. And a, a steal. steal by Walensky. McLeod fouled hard. She goes down to the ground. And that was a bit of a, a bit of a strong foul, Katrina. Emily Puccini, her third personal, fourth team foul. Well, you gotta think Toronto's getting pretty frustrated at this point as the second quarter's winding down. Very opposite storylines at both ends of the court. Western, everything seems to be going right. All their baskets are falling. Toronto not seeming to have any luck right now. Five for 26 from the field. Two for 12, three-point shooting. They want this half to be over. McLeod finally Misses a shot. 51 seconds to go in the half. Toronto, good double team by the Western Mustangs coming over. They do get called for the foul, but great recognition of the space. As soon as 
the varsity blues have the ball down. Western is recognizing it and they're mirroring the ball. So the Blues will do an inbound pass, doing the, the train, common inbound play. Three pointer, that one doesn't go either from Baker. The Varsity Blues can't buy a basket right now. UT foul with 11, Adam, first second. 38 yeah. seconds to go in the Victoria first Hine half. Victoria Hine will go to the line for a pair. Hine keeps the momentum building. She makes this one. Western can go up by 40. And she makes no mistake. Western. 40 point lead over Toronto right now. Parks, doesn't like the looks of the score. She's gonna do absolutely everything to get them back into this game. Baker, it is about another near steal by Walensky. Great active hands on defense. 22 seconds to go in the quarter. Six seconds in the shot clock. Ado driving, tries to draw the foul, gets her own rebound. And she gets the basket and the harm. Ado will go to the line for one and try to make this a three point play. Maybe some momentum that the Blues could use going into the third quarter because they have had a, a first half, not really necessarily to forget, but just they've been watching Western. They're just witnessing great basketball for the Mustangs. 10 seconds to go in the half. Oh, and the mistakes. Well, it's not a half court. The violation of Western is fortunate. Four seconds to go. Three. Walensky, a deep three, an air ball, but that doesn't matter. Western, 57-20 over the Varsity Blues. Amazing stuff here. Meredith McLeod, a perfect seven of seven from the field, 20 points, five of five from downtown. Walensky has 11 points. Laura Graham has 10 points. And for the Toronto Varsity Blues, just, just fit 20 points in the quarter. Leading the way for them, it's Atkinson. But wow, Western, 60% from the field. The Toronto's 21% and a 66% from downtown, even better. We'll be back and see how the Toronto Varsity Blues will respond to this annihilating Western performance in the first half. Don't miss it on Mustangs TV in about 14 minutes. to never letting its customers down. Not a single one. Never, ever, ever. Normal doesn't live to beat the rush. Obsessed about out the door times? That's not normal. Counting pepperoni in your sleep? Not normal. Normal is average. Normal is ordinary. Normal is what people expect. Normal doesn't have pizza sauce flowing through its veins. The other guy is normal. That's why no one delivers like we do.
Law has just always been a passion of mine. It's something I've known I've wanted to do since I was a little kid. There was never anything that was going to stop me from coming to law school and from becoming a lawyer. My dad was always my number one support. Like all good parents, he wanted the things for his kids that he could never have. Being a student that has always demonstrated financial need, it's been difficult to feel like there's been somebody to help you. And for the first time when I received this money, it felt like somebody had given me a break. I don't know if there are words that could convey how grateful and how impactful their donation was and what it's done for me. It affects me every day in everything I do, in my school, in my personal life. Knowing that we would have this money changed both of our lives. Thank you for supporting Student Dreams. What do I like best about Brescia? I love the light. The values here are my values. Compassion, creativity, empowerment. I love it that we're all from different places, different backgrounds, and we're all women. The campus is gorgeous, and there's something going on 24 seven. That's easy, Dr. Garcia. I wouldn't be headed to grad school if she hadn't inspired me to follow my dream from day one. Russia's got a deep-rooted history going back nearly 100 years. And yet, what I'm studying is right on the edge. For me, it's always been about my Brescia family. I came to Brescia to discover my strengths. The new residence is where my friends and I hang out and recharge. In two minutes, I can cross the street and go from this intimate campus where I know everybody to one of the busiest universities in Canada. I love living at Brescia and working out at Western. These students, their passion for learning, their curiosity about the world, I learn from them every day. I sleep well, I eat well, and I've never wanted to work so hard. Studying at Brescia has given me the space to find myself and my voice. What'll be your favorite thing about Brescia? Come and find out. Welcome to Golden Hawk Lake. Is this the new Toyota Highlander? Yep. Must feel like your own little world in here. I guess. Does this world of yours have a name? Mm, uh, no. Ever look at the stars through your moonroof? I have. Ever wish upon them? No, not, no. Is a backup camera like having eyes in the back of your head? A little. One or two eyes? Oh. So it has a V6 engine, right? Yes, sir. Is it powerful? Definitely. Do you think I'm powerful? Possibly. The all-new Toyota Highlander. One look, and you'll want to know more. After the final ball has flown, and the final catch made, and the last screaming fan has left the stadium, the ball is passed from one team member to the next so the players can sign their names. But of all the names, there is one on that ball that is perhaps the most important. That name is Wilson. Good luck this season. Time. It lets us plan to dream, plan to learn, plan to succeed, plan to invest, plan to enjoy, plan to help, plan to leave to others. The Plan by Investors Group, helping you provide for the people you care about now and over time.
the road trip. It's freedom. It's exploration. It's about new experiences. And this road trip has been brought to you by Pioneer Bonus Bucks. Welcome to Golden Hawk Lake. Is this the new Toyota Highlander? Yep. Must feel like your own little world in here. I guess. Does this world of yours have a name? N uh, no. Ever look at the stars through your moonroof? I have. Ever wish upon them? No, not, no. Is backup camera like having eyes in the back of your head? A little. One or two eyes? Oh. So it has a V6 engine, right? Yes, sir. Is it powerful? Definitely. Do you think I'm powerful? Possibly. The all-new Toyota Highlander. One look, and you'll want to know more. Every day, you go new places. A small change in how you do things, or moving your things to a whole new town, or many things to many towns, all at once. No matter how small the move, it can be a big leap from where you are now. You've got it in you to go new places. So do we. We go there every day. We're here to help you move to places on the map, in the mind, in the heart, or all three. Go new places with AMJ Campbell. Contact us at 888-AMJ-MOVE or amjcampbell.com. Welcome to Golden Hawk Lake. Is this the new Toyota Highlander? Yep. Must feel like your own little world in here. I guess. Does this world of yours have a name? N uh, no. Ever look at the stars through your moonroof? I have. Ever wish upon them? No, not, no. Is backup camera like having eyes in the back of your head? A little. One or two eyes? Oh. So it has a V6 engine, right? Yes, sir. Is it powerful? Definitely. Do you think I'm powerful? Possibly. The all-new Toyota Highlander. One look, and you'll want to know more.
welcome back to Alumni Hall and what's turning out to be a blowout here in this first round playoff game between the Western Mustangs and the Toronto Varsity Blues. Western running away with this one, 57-20. And I mean, it's been a lot of three-pointers, but one player in particular, Meredith McLeod, 20 points at halftime. This is the best basketball game I've ever seen Meredith McLeod play in the four years I've been here. She is playing an incredible game, has not missed a shot yet. Seven shots, seven baskets. And um, through the first half of this game, she already has a career high previous to this game. She had 16 points in a 86-65 win over Algoma. So 57 to 20, and there, there is by the numbers right there. You can see on your screen, Western, much better from the field. They are actually 60% from the field this game, 21 of 35. And like we said, even better, 66.7 from the, for a three-point land, while the Toronto Varsity Blues only six of 28 from three point for the, from the field and, and two of 13 from downtown. So it's really a tale of two teams in the first half and we'll see how Toronto responds. Remember, Toronto did beat Western essentially twice this year, once in regular season and once in a invitational tournament in Toronto. And just like that, a start they could perfectly map out as Collier knocks down the J. Western led by as many as 40 points in the first half. They look to build on that. And what's, what's really amazing, Katrina, is Western top score and the OUA's top score. Mackenzie Puklich only has two points in, all, in, that, in that scoring outburst. Well, at the beginning of the game, the coaching staff said they had to look out for Puklich and Walensky, the big two, but it's been McLeod leading the way. Winsky does have 11 points on the game so far. She's put up a strong performance. But Laura Graham, not far behind either with 10 points through two quarters. And she's at the free throw line right now. Three point shooting today, she's three for four. And that one is good. She makes both. Atkinson trying to claw very, this very, very steep hill that the Toronto is down and that goes out of bounds on Atkinson. She's got eight points, pass a little bit too far, out of reach. Western on the season averages 71.3 points per game. They already have 59 right now. Walensky calling the shots at the top, driving down low. Good look into Curran. Curran can't get that one to go. Hine there for the rebound. Hine draws the foul. She'll go to the line for two. Well, the Western bench, they're loving it right now. Look at look at Maddie Horst. She is on her feet. And they are all happy. I mean, who wouldn't be? You're playing great basketball. You got a good crowd here. the last time you can check out the Western Mustangs women's basketball team in London this year. So a great first half to do that. And Victoria Hine knocks down both free throws there. Western back up by 39 points. Foul called. The Blues had 11 turnovers in the first half. Caroline Olinsky, three steals of Western six. They were very good in the fast break too. And we will look for them to be active on defense in the second. We'll look for it to be no different in this one. Here's the drive. Collier doesn't go. Back out to Ado and Ado. The soft touch near the basket, she makes that one. And Toronto, a bit more of a full court press on than in the first half. 
They're trying to do everything to get possession of the basketball. Walensky, that one intended for Puklic, and it's turned over. Very uncharacteristic of Caroline Walensky. Good defense by the Blues. Curran getting back to her feet. The Blues ahead of the play. Atkinson for three. It's off. Good rebound from the Blues, and Western will get it back. Hine in transition. Oh, and a great block courtesy of Alana Garner and Mackenzie Puklich. I mean, she's one of the best shooters in all of Ontario. She didn't even really warm up in the first half. She didn't have to. She's got five points now in the game. Puklich, a player that, Katrina, you mentioned head coach Michelle Belanger had their eyes out for going into this game. Would it be safe to say that they didn't re really take into account players like McLeod and Graham? Well, it's hard to stop a team when everybody on the court has the capability of putting in baskets, in putting up points, and Western is showing today that they're, they're not showing any weak links in this lineup right now. They've had strong players come off the bench and put up points. Their starters are performing. It's a but not what the head coach anticipated. Great basketball, and the Blues missing both free throws there. Walensky gets it back from Graham. She'll give it right back to her. Toronto showing a little bit more pesk on defense in the second half. Playing, getting up close and personal with the Western Mustangs on defense. And is causing a little bit more of troubles for the Stangs here in the second half. Shot clock winding down to seven seconds. Walensky driving right. She's going to go all the way to the hoop. Off the glass, it won't go. Toronto back the other way. They have a two on one with McLeod trailing in the play. Pull up jumper is good from a doe. The fifth year veteran guard. Trying to get the Blues back into more of a group. Walensky showing no space from Edwards. Hine, left elbow. Back to Julia Curran, down low to Caroline Walensky. Western. Not being able to find as many open three-pointers. But Caroline Olinsky, she's been money from that area of the floor so far this game. She's been money on that all year. Well, this is the last game that we'll be seeing her play at Alumni Hall, and she wants to go out with a bang. She does. Nice to see her get honored on Seniors Day at Alumni Hall last Saturday night. Her and Jamie Muir, the only two seniors Graduate, set to graduate on this Western Mustangs basketball team, which in a game like this just has to give you, has to give head coach Brian Chang so much hope for the future going forward. Obviously, sad to see those two players go. We heard him say a lot of great things about both players, but this Western Mustangs team this year, 14 and six, and only losing those two players, you gotta wonder what they're capable of doing next year with almost their entire lineup returning. McLeod, Walensky at the top. Toronto looking to double team anytime they can. Foul called on Ado. And that's the fourth team foul on the Varsity Blues. And there's only four minutes into this quarter. So the Blues have to keep an eye on their fouls, or Western will be going to the line for free throws, where they've been knocking those down on the, on the court today as well. McLeod thinks about shooting, she's going to, and she makes her first miss of the game, but it won't count, it won't count. She's still perfect, Katrina. She'll go to the line for a three. She's missed one free throw today, she's one of two from there, but she's still perfect from everywhere on the floor. Phenomenal. Five three-pointers in this game for McLeod. She has really stepped up, as we mentioned earlier, in the absence of Maddie Horse. McLeod makes the second. She now has a lot 
of points, and she makes the, the third as well. So with that, you can count it. 24 points for Meredith McLeod so far in this game. A two-pointer for Maddie Two. Baker. Baker all the way from Vancouver, BC on this Toronto Varsity Blues team. Western will get the ball and hold on to it. You gotta love the energy on this court right now for the Western Mustangs. Curran has trouble squeezing onto that ball. Jump ball called, arrow in favor of Western, so they will hold on to it, Katrina. And a risky pass from Graham, but Curran able to slightly maneuver around Bikini and get that bucket up to keep Western up by 40 points. Oh, and a steal. McLeod, great pass to Walensky. Walensky has Graham, which is going to go to the hoop and looking for contact. Didn't get it. That layup wasn't close. Walensky was attempting to get the ball back from Parks and she is struck that she did not foul there. Barely touched the ball, but the ref, their instinct was a foul. So Walensky picks it up to give Western now four fouls on the quarter. Sarah Bennett checks in. Parks, the rookie from Scarborough. She's gonna fire and make. Kiera Parks, Parks knocks down a long two from the corner. A great rookie season to say the least for her. And she is not far from home at Toronto. That pass out of bounds off of Western. Mustang starting to get a little bit more flustered now by this Toronto defense. You saw there, Graham was shoved out of the way and she couldn't really get to that ball. Well, Toronto at this point, they've, they've dug themselves a pretty big hole that they're trying to climb out of. So they don't want to give this Western team any more easy baskets. They're going to play tough defense and they're going to try and find a way to get back into this game. So Yannick Smith, another rookie. She can't keep that ball in play for the Varsity Blue, so it will be Western ball, 3.57 to go in the third quarter at Alumni Hall. And now Parks will back right off the veteran guard. Caroline Walensky. Walensky has a screen from Mahazic. She's not gonna use it. Oh, beautiful bounce pass down low to Julia Curran. Curran. Finishes off the play. Perfectly executed. A great look by Lewinsky. She's got 89 assists this season, which is third in the OUA, which is what makes her such a dangerous player. She has that capability to put points up on the board. She averages 13.6 points a game, but third in assists at 89 and second in steals with 50 on the season. So she can do everything. She can, and Victoria Hine will come back in for Julia Curran. Western now three guards on the floor, two forwards. They're going to try out with Victoria Hine and Alex Van Heeswick on the floor. And we will be right back with more third quarter action after this. Lone Star believes that mesquite flavor don't come in a shaker. Tortillas should never be microwaved. And pico de gallo don't come from no jar. 
That's why Lone Star fires their grill with real mesquite wood truck from Texas. Makes freshly baked to order tortillas in their own oven and fresh chops their pico daily. Now, if that much goes into making their fajitas taste so good, imagine what goes into everything else. Lone Star. The taste is in the details. It's 72-32 Western. And at this point, we want to take a quick look at the CIS top 10 rankings across Canada coming into the playoffs. There they are. The Ryerson Rams finished in fourth. And Ottawa, also a familiar team on there, they finished in sixth, 17 and two. McMaster, eighth, and Windsor, who actually didn't even make the top four. They, they, if they're playing basketball tonight, they finished in 10th. A lot of respect to that. Lancer program, the five-time defending champs. We saw them knock off Western a couple weeks ago in a critical basketball matchup. They're underneath, that doesn't go for Parks. And here comes the Western Mustangs. A lead pass for Caroline Walensky, spinning, and can't hit it, but Hine gets the rebound. Wow. A bit of a mess to say the least under that Toronto basket. Walensky gets credited with the foul, that's her third. And I don't know how to describe what happened there, Katrina. Rashida Atkinson sinking both of her free throws there. She's been the offensive leader for the Toronto team this year. Averages 15.6 points per game, which is seventh in the OUA. She's got a pretty good three-point shot, too. We haven't seen it a lot tonight, but she has the seventh best three-point percentage at 35.6. So I wouldn't be surprised if she brings that out soon. Puklich. Over to McLeod. Two seconds on the go, she's got to shoot it. And it does not go. A tough shot for Mackenzie Puklich. But great vision shown from her there. Earlier in the sequence, we saw a backdoor pass to Laura Graham. She had trouble handling it, but Western really doing a great job moving away from the ball. Puklich just about came up with a steal there. Western. Still leads by 38 points. Jump shot, doesn't go. Here's the rebound though from the Varsity Blues. That one still hung on by Sarah Bennett. Toronto, a lot of rookies on their team. Plus they fell number six for Eight to be exact. Western has just four, two who are very critical to this team, Julia Curran and Laura Graham. Sarah Bennett can't make the extra free throw. Van Heeswick, she goes out to Mackenzie Puklich. Graham for three, got it! The Splash Sisters are at it again. Western unloading from distance. 75-34, Western for their biggest lead today. Bikini. Her struggles in the free throw line indicate the struggles Toronto's had this game. She misses both, gets her own rebound. And a bank shot for three. Baker 
She's finding a way to get it done. Nobody else is on this Varsity Blues team. Victoria Hine looking for one of her guards. She's got Graham. Graham across to Sam Lauks. A beautiful pass down low to Victoria Hine. That's textbook. Great look from Cassidy Crow. Crow hasn't only played in seven games this season. Nice to see her back in the lineup. She's had about five points per game in each of those contests though. McLeod out to the races. Mustangs, they gotta get back to using McLeod or she's gonna cool off soon. Calling for the ball. McLeod. Oh, she wanted to go there. Lauks, 10 seconds to go in the shot clock. Good cut and a post up from Graham. Graham trying her handle in the post. Couldn't get that one to fall. 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. Western, here comes McLeod. Oh, and a soft touch from her. No, she misses. And that is her first miss of the game. And she swung her hands to show her frustration, but give her credit. What a game she's had. And there's still so much more time to go. Let's take a very close look at this Varsity Blues team in the final 16 seconds of the quarter. You've got Parks really trying to solidify herself as a, as a guard of the future. See what she can do. Six seconds to go. Jump shot. Can't find the mark. Western. No time left. So after three, 77-37. Much difference in the third quarter from the Western Mustangs. They've been leading the game from the start. That's what they continue to do in the third quarter. They're, they're making a lot of their baskets. Not as much as we saw in the first half, but still, still leading this game, setting the pace, and that's why they're up by 40 right now. That's right, they are. We'll see the final quarter of basketball in Alumni Hall this year, right after this. Every day you go new places. A small change in how you do things, or moving your things to a whole new town, or many things to many towns all at once. No matter how small the move, it can be a big leap from where you are now. You've got it in you to go new places. So do we, we go there every day. We're here to help you move to places on the map, in the mind, in the heart, or all three. Go new places with AMJ Campbell. Contact us at 888-AMJ-MOVE or amjcampbell.com. Seven thirty-seven Western Toronto starting to get a little bit more of a better quarter. They lost that one by just three points. It was just 2017, so Toronto starting to play a little better at basketball. And we will see what they can do in this fourth quarter. The turnover is a big thing so far, Katrina. Well, it's how Western has gotten such a substantial lead over the past three quarters. Toronto's had 15 turnovers to Western's eight, but what's more important is Western's 23 points that they've had off of turnovers, opposed to Toronto's just one point that they've had. And those are huge. Western has done great off of those Toronto turnovers. And Cassie Crow, great look for her. To give Western the first two points of the quarter. Crow, Caroline Walensky. Western
Western player still hard at work right now in spite of a big lead on the floor. We still await points from Alex Van Heeswick. She is the lone Mustang that's played who hasn't scored yet. Varsity Blues, they got a few players that haven't scored. Sarah Bennett. Bennett, she's one of them. She got her first basket there. UT foul number 21. Charlotte Collier, her third personal first team foul. Laura Graham checking in for Meredith McLeod. Check that for Sam Rose. Welcome back, Alana Garner, for the Blues. Walensky finds Graham. Toronto backing off their press a little bit right now. They're so far out of this game. They're really just playing for themselves to have a decent final quarter of basketball and not feel too bad going into the regular summer. Shot clock winding down. Curran trying to rip the ball. It will expire. And Toronto will get the ball back. Western. Let's see how they can do on defense. They've done great so far. They've got so many steals off of Toronto turnovers. Parks. She can't make the three. Good rebound from Adoa. Adoa will get fouled and she'll go to the line for two. Toronto has a team this year. Just 59% from the, the charity stripe. As Kuklich comes into the game and Cassidy Crow, I mean look at that. The Western bench, everybody on their feet as she comes back. So nice to see. She makes both, so it's now 79-41 Western. Walensky showing off her dangles, and Puklish. That ball hit, goes off of the Toronto players. Walensky gets it back. Walensky looking for her teammate. She's got Graham for three. Oh, and Graham. Misses her first three-point attempt of the game. McLeod. And she misses as well. She missed her first three-pointer of the game. But it doesn't matter. Walensky gets it back. But great rebounding from the Western Mustangs. Get those second efforts. And McLeod and Graham, give these ladies credit. They've had unbelievable basketball games today. Sweet looking step back from Parks, can't get it to go. Puklich corralling the rebound for the Western Mustang, 6.55 to go in this one. Walensky going harder to the hoop. She's got 15 points and she will look to add to that. A lot of layups, a lot of basket, a lot of pull-up jumpers. She's had a great game. She may not be knocking down all the three-pointers, but she's really orchestrating this Western offense. She's been a leader on a, on the team this year, and her last game in Alumni Hall, she, you have to think what, what emotions are going through her head right now. Obviously, it has to be an emotional time for Linsky, knowing that this is her last game 
in Alumni Hall, and she's she's playing well. Cassie Crow checking in for Caroline Walensky. So Walensky hits both. Oh, and a good hand hands up there from Crow. Not even look at the steal, but look here's Mary McLeod in transition. Makes the basket. She's had a much quieter second half than her first. She had 20 points after the first two quarters, just six in the second half. She has 26 points. And we will take a look at the out of town scoreboard now. It's a very busy night in basketball for women's playoffs. There they are. Laurier actually ahead of Windsor right now in the third quarter. Wouldn't that be something, Katrina, if they knocked out the defending champs in the first round in Windsor? There's Queens and Laurentian. No surprise there. Queens ahead of Laurentian. It's 8.48 to go. Laurentian sticking around. The only three wins in the season. Looking good there. Brock and Guelph just underway. Brock, 12, 10 against Guelph. Those teams very close in the standings. That should be a good game. 5.41 to go in the first. And so lots of, of good basketball on right now. And Western can probably start preparing for their playoff game on Saturday at Ryerson. Ryerson, the number two seed out of Ontario, where they actually ranked the highest in the top, top 10 rankings in Canada. They were third best in Canada, so they were the top Ontario team in those rankings. But it was Ottawa who got the number one seed. Ryerson got number two, and that will be a tough task for the Western Mustangs. But they won't have their point guard that game, but if they can just keep playing like this, they should be able to toy with the, the Rams. They played one game this year. Western lost 84-70 back on November 20th. As Atkinson knocks down that one. So a much tougher basketball game ahead for the Western come Saturday night. Graham, five seconds to go. Driving, Constantino, baseline jumper, nowhere near. And the Blues starting to come on a little bit, but they're still down by 42 points. Puklic gets called there. Mackenzie Puklic, since December, has scored double digits in every single regular season basketball game. She may not need to do that here in this first playoff game. We'll monitor that to see if Western can get to the next round. And there she is, Mackenzie Puglich. She, she led the way for Western when they played Ryerson back in November. She had 17, Walensky had 14, and the injured Maddie Horse had 11. In transition, look who it is, Sonia Majadovic. In her first action of the game is the final Western basketball player dressed to get on the scoreboard. Everybody getting in on the action. Well, we talked about how Western's so good in transition. They're so good at that fast break, and that was textbook right there. Just, just the way they drew it up. Crow, a little turnaround way off. Puklic out for Majadovic. She can't make the three-pointer. 4.17 to go in the fourth quarter. Three-pointer from the corner from the varsity blues. They can't get it to go. 
But Rashida Atkinson there for the putback. Constantino down low. Crow can't make the mark. It's been a really good season for Maddie Horst in just her second year as a Western Mustang. We know she's done for the year, but we got, we did, we got to take a moment and just talk about how good of a year she's had. Her shooting, if you watch her play, is something that definitely stands out. She's eighth in field goal percentage, 47.5. Third in three-point percentage, 42.6. And it's a tough blow to the Mustangs to not have her the rest of the way. She's out for the rest of the season with a with a leg injury, but she's she's helped them get to this point. So she has to take pride in that. And She's, you can see over there beaming on the bench. She's so excited with the way that this team's played today. She has the third best three-point shooter in the league. And, and what the thing about her, she just takes such smart shots. There's a steal from the Western Mustangs. The Sam Lowe finishes it off in transition. All started with a great Kuklich steal. And then Graham takes that up the court. Western rolling 91 points. Her struggles continue. Rashada Atkinson just cannot get a bucket. So Mackenzie Puklich, there you go, Western. You got your last look at her at home. You're gonna get to see her one, maybe two more years for the Western Mustangs. And you can follow her this weekend on Saturday. They're gonna need her a lot more playing a much tougher team in the Ryerson Rams. She will be against Ping Giles, the second leading scorer in the OUA. And a turnover, Western, 91-47, 231. It's not impossible we score 100, but it's not needed. Not needed, but would be a little bit of a confidence booster heading into the quarterfinals. This is a team that averages 71.3 points per game, so 20 points ahead of their average for the season, but I would not be shocked if we saw 100. Leading by 44 points. We'll see what the final score ends up being after this commercial. Welcome to Golden Hawk Lake. Is this the new Toyota Highlander? Yep. Must feel like your own little world in here. I guess. Does this world of yours have a name? N uh, no. Ever look at the stars through your moonroof? I have. Ever wish upon them? No, not, no. Is backup camera like having eyes in the back of your head? A little. One or two eyes? Oh. So it has a V6 engine, right? Yes, sir. Is it powerful? Definitely. Do you think I'm powerful? Possibly. The all-new Toyota Highlander. One look, and you'll want to know more. Ninety-one forty-seven Western ahead, big at Alumni Hall. Two thirty to go. To the Western Mustangs, what do you got to do right now? You've already played an amazing basketball game. How do you finish off this two twenty play? I say you got to keep playing hard. Yes, this this game is no doubt in hand for the Mustangs, but they've got a tough opponent in Ryerson on the weekend, and they want to finish off this, this fourth quarter strong. Jump shot doesn't go for the Varsity Blues. They are really struggling from the field today. Shooting just 29%, they upped that they are just around 22 in the first half. 
Laura Graham can't finish underneath. So Western Ryerson, Saturday, It was 84-70 last time these two teams played, as I mentioned. In the, in the last game, back at Alumni Hall on November 20th, Western le actually led 2015 after the first quarter. Ryerson stormed back, winning the second quarter by 14 points to lead the, at the half by nine, and then it was actually tied in the third quarter, but the Western Mustangs still trail by nine, and then Ryerson put the icing on the cake, winning the fourth quarter, 23-18. Sophia Pasca had 23 points. Sylviana Jez had 18. Kaneka Pingiles had 17. And those are three players that, Ry that Western will have to shut down if they have a chance of winning on Saturday. And in this one, 126 to go. Toronto, good lead pass ahead to Ado. Ado in transition. And Graham gets called for the foul. Must say foul number eight. Laura Graham, her third personal. Good team foul. Got to be here checking in for the Blues. Meredith McLeod on the bench now, likely done for the game after an absolutely amazing first half in which she was perfect from all the field in the three-point line for 20 points. Just six points in the second half. Finished with a career-high 26. Kudos to her. Caroline Walensky, she's on the bench now too, done for the game. Seven of 12 from the field. 17 points and six assists. Great game from her as well. Nice to see Laura Graham getting some getting some opportunity in the point guard position right now. Well, Laura Graham, the future of this team, one of the players that will be the future, only in her first year of eligibility. And she's gotten quite a few minutes in this game. She's been shooting well. It's got to be a great self-confidence booster for her. And she's only going to get better the more years she plays and the more time that she gets. Graham, 13 points on the night. Four for six, three-point shooting. 39 seconds of basketball left for you to see your Western Mustangs women's team play at Alumni Hall. Both teams still playing hard, down to the wire, in spite of the score. And another foul. Western doesn't need to foul at this point. They've won. They just keep their hands up. It's a good practice for them on defense right now. Every single Western player on the floor right now came off the bench this game. As they will finish off. And Ado will shoot likely the last free throw of the game. 91-51, Western with a 40 point margin. They can run the clock out here. And the players already on their feet on the Western Mustangs bench. A game to remember for the woman. 91 points. We're going to the next round, Katrina. No Matty Horse. No problem. Meredith McLeod, 26 points. Walensky, 17. Laura Graham scores 13. And the Western Mustangs win big. A great season for the Toronto Varsity Blues to get to this point. Knocking off Queens in the last regular season game, going on a two-win win streak, but just not enough to match this wonderful Western Mustangs basketball team today. What stood out to you the most? Well, what a game Meredith McLeod had. Three for six, three-point shooting, but it was 
Western shooting overall and their ability to get contributions from a lot of the players that we maybe didn't expect to perform big in this game, but Western 33 of 63 field goal percentage, 12 for 21 three-point shooting, over 50%, which is which was a big part of their success today. So if they if they shoot like that, then they've got a good chance against Ryerson. They certainly do, and you can catch that game on OUA TV. We are signing out for women's basketball on the season. It's been a pleasure calling games for you. We'll have our final basketball broadcast from Alumni Hall in about 15 minutes. The men's game is on. It's a rematch from last Friday night. Western and Lakehead, don't miss it. See you then. Welcome to Golden Hawk Lake. Is this